There's a new game called Cyberpunk 2077 that's just been released and after 10 years in development, it's kind of a big deal. The game is based in the near future of 2077, where technology has become so advanced and improved so much that it plays a constant vital role in people's daily lives, even to the point where it's integrated into their own bodies. Which got me thinking, 2077 really isn't too far away. So I wanted to know if the technology in the game is actually possible. Like, how close are we to it today? Now, a really interesting part of the game's technology is that people can modify their own bodies in a massive range of different ways. And because there are so many different types of these body enhancements in the game, it would take me way too long to go over them in one video. So in this episode, I'm just gonna focus on one category, bionic arms and legs. But if by the end of this video you decide you really liked it and you want to see me explore more of the technologies in the game, then just leave a like and let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so when it comes to prosthetic arms and legs, the game really likes to push them to some pretty extreme levels. You've got straightforward limb replacement, like with the character Johnny Silverhand, who is played by the internet hero himself, Keanu Reeves. Whoa! And there's also more advanced types, like the super strong gorilla arms that can rip apart metal doors, and also bionic limbs that have weapons built into them that can do things that would probably get this video demonetized if I showed you it. So you'll just have to use your imagination or just go check out some gameplay footage for yourself. But basically it is bionic prosthetics that gives people what are essentially super abilities. So to see how close we are to that sort of thing, we've first got to look at some modern day tech. And it turns out that there are actually a load of different companies working on different methods and in different ways to provide both prosthetic limbs and bionic prosthetic limbs for people that need them. Which is obviously amazing to see, and it means that there are a range of different types, some that are more advanced than others, but also some that are more affordable than others, increasing access to these prosthetic limbs for more and more people that need them. But when it comes to bionic prosthetic arms and hands, there is a lot to be figured out. Now you might do this as well, but I definitely take my hands for granted. I mean, mine are a little bit lanky, but these things are incredible. I mean, us humans have some of the most advanced pieces of engineering in the natural world that have the ability to both like powerfully grip some things, but also manipulate objects with precision and finesse. Whoa, oh, look at that. Only took me like 10 years to learn that. Whoa, whoa, finesse. And there's a bionic arm that can do all of that versatile movement and more, and even play piano. It's called the Modular Prosthetic Limb, or the MPL, and it was developed by Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. And it's probably safe to call it the most advanced prosthetic arm ever made, so far at least. It attaches directly to a device that is integrated into the person's bone, and it can be controlled wirelessly through electrical signals that are generated by muscle contractions, which are picked up by just two little devices that are just strapped to the user. The wrist and elbow can rotate easily, and the fingers can be moved individually, mimicking natural movement with precise control to the point where some users can play instruments. And it can even be controlled directly by the brain using brain implants. Now something that's pretty cool to me is that the arm is also modular, which means that it can be split into separate parts of the upper arm, the forearm, and the hand, and can function properly at each level. So the same system can be used by people that are needing an entire arm or just a hand. And the team has also managed to add sensors into the fingertips that have a sense of touch. And what this means is that after a specific type of neural surgery, people can actually feel what the arm is touching. So just like when I pick stuff up like this uh, little model of King Kong climbing the Empire State Building that my brother got me, they also know when they've picked stuff up and they can apply the right amount of grip pressure to, you know, hold it without dropping it, but not crush it. This would be pretty hard to crush, but think about eggs and, um, snail shells, stuff people pick up all the time, you know? There are other companies that are focused on making more affordable bionic arms that are a little bit more simple than the MPL, like the customizable hero arm by Open Bionics. But for the most advanced overall design of a bionic arm and hand, the MPL is the pinnacle. It is the mwah, chef's kiss of bionic arms. Okay, so when it comes to bionic prosthetic legs, there is also a bunch of advances going on in that area too, that are also trying to mimic the natural movements of the human body. 
In a really basic sense, your leg can be split into two main parts. The actual leg, including the knee joint, and then the foot and the ankle joint. And when you're walking, both of these parts play important roles in absorbing impact and providing driving power. And when it comes to prosthetic bionic legs, one of the most state-of-the-art systems right now is the power knee from Ossa. It's a motor-driven knee that powers through a stride and has a bunch of sensors built into it so it can detect what activity the user is trying to perform, and then it adjusts the knee system automatically to fit with that activity. Which clearly is extremely cool, but what gets me really excited is this bionic ankle joint that was created by the MIT Media Lab. It's called the Empower Ankle Joint, and it mimics the natural mechanics of a calf and ankle joint, absorbing pressure when the heel strikes on the ground and putting out power to drive the user forward as they take a step. Apparently, it barely takes any training to use and almost instantly feels like a natural foot. Similar to the knee I just spoke about, it's got a microprocessor and sensors inside that keep track of what the user is doing and responds by changing the amount of power it puts out through the ankle's motor and spring at any time. Now, with sensors added to pick up electrical signals from muscles, a user can take control of the bionic ankle and foot's movement. And to make that possible, the team developed a new medical procedure called the Ewing procedure, which I'm going to talk about in a second because this thing is mind-blowing and could lead to some pretty crazy stuff in the future. Which moves me nicely on to the next question. If this is what we've got right now for bionic limbs, what about the future? What about those cyberpunk limbs? So all of the bionic limbs that I've spoken about so far are for people that are missing a limb already and need one in order to live their lives more easily and more naturally, which is great that they're being developed, but what about enhancing natural abilities? Could bionic prosthetics get so good that people will voluntarily opt to replace one of their natural limbs with a robotic one in order to get things like increased strength or endurance? Both the MPL and the Empower Ankle are meant to have human-like strength right now, but these technologies will only improve and bionic limbs will get stronger and stronger. So eventually, they likely will be able to outcompete their natural counterparts. But before we get ahead of ourselves, you need to understand something you kind of run into a little bit of a problem. Let's say that a bionic arm could lift some incredible amount of weight. If the rest of your body can't do that, then the weight is just gonna either crush your body or like rip the limbs straight from your torso. So you'd need an almost fully bionic body or a powerful exoskeleton to actually lift huge weights or like jump massive distances with super powerful legs without destroying the rest of your body. Ah! Which might not actually be too crazy of an idea. You remember that procedure I said I was gonna talk about? It takes muscles that work together naturally in the body and it attaches them together to create a bond called an Amy. It lets the person both control a bionic limb like never before and lets the bionic limb give them sensory feedback about where it is in space. The procedure let an amputee rock climber control the bionic ankle and almost instantly he started to move it as if it was a real foot, doing these little movements and little reflexes that we don't even realize we're doing in daily life. But they also think that this same procedure could let future humans do insane stuff, like integrate exoskeletons to the outside of their bodies, which could enhance them or let them make use of super strong bionic limbs. And they even seriously suggested it could lead to the attachment and control of crazier bionics, like wings. Seriously, they genuinely suggested that. So those Mantis Blade bionic arms in Cyberpunk 2077, that would probably get this video demonetized if I showed you what they could do, they seem a little bit less impossible when an actual MIT professor that's working on bionic limbs is suggesting what crazy stuff his tech could lead to. Now, okay, obviously this is all just speculation at this point, and it could just be people letting their imaginations run just a little bit wild. But in the next half century, we could really see massive improvements being made to the lives of people that are missing limbs. And by 2077, it is a real possibility that we could see people opt to replace their fleshy human limbs with these bionic legs and arms, which means we could be in for a really interesting 21st century, especially for people that are wanting a little taste of that superhero life. 
Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. It was really fun to just dive into this technology and really see where it's at and where it could go to. And hopefully you enjoyed it too. As always, a massive thanks has to go to my Patreon supporters that give me the time to actually dive into these topics like this. So thank you to all of you. You really make a difference in making this stuff possible. And for everybody else, consider subscribing if you're not already because I am working on a bucket load of stuff just like this that's coming real soon. And I will see you on the next one, my friends.